Hey internet, it's Oliver, and today I'm going to be talking about the incredible world of biomedical and biological engineering. I'm going to be going over some definitions of biomedical engineering, some of the history and what progress has been made in the field. I'm going to talk about what kinds of things you might learn from a biomedical engineering degree if you decide to take one. And lastly, I'm going to talk about what kinds of jobs, what your starting salary is going to look like, and what types of other degrees you might be able to take after doing your biomedical engineering undergrad. Biomedical engineering is a huge field, and the concept of biomedical engineering can really be applied to almost anything in the science fields. This can be things like coming up with medicines and vaccines, or helping people who lost a limb to regain movement, creating workout apps, or different biomedical technology that let you measure things like blood sugar if you're a diabetic, for example. There are so many applications for biomedical engineering, and it crosses over into pretty much every kind of engineering out there. You can have a mechanical, electrical, software, robotics, or chemical biomedical engineer. The difference being that a biomedical engineer will know a lot more about biology than any of these other engineers because generally you don't learn anything about biology in a regular engineering degree. So a biomedical engineer would take this combined knowledge of engineering and biology and try to make something very cool or helpful. If you're looking for a more formal definition of biomedical engineering, Wikipedia defines biomedical engineering as the application of engineering principles and design concepts to medicine and biology for healthcare purposes. There are so many different subfields within biomedical engineering, and if you want to take a more detailed look at them, I've linked to the Wikipedia page in the description. But generally speaking, first up we have bioinformatics, which is basically just using computer science and data in order to come up with some kind of answers to questions that biologists might have. Second, we have biomechanics, which is just traditional mechanics, but with a biological organism. So this type of mechanics essentially deals with things that are moving inside of cells and tissues. Third, we have biomaterials, which is essentially just chemical or material engineering, but instead of using the traditional materials, you use things that might be found from an organism, or from a person, or from anything else in the natural world, and you create something cool out of it. The first thing that comes to mind are these golden silk spiders, which create very strong, almost Kevlar-level threads, and you can create some really cool art pieces using this spider silk, so that would be an example of a biomaterial. Fourth, we have biomedical optics, so if any of you out there want to figure out how to fix my eyesight, I would very much appreciate it. <laughs> And fifth, we have genetic engineering, which has really been thrown into the spotlight recently with the invention of CRISPR a few years ago. There's so much potential with genetics in the engineering field. I actually used to have this science podcast where I talked about CRISPR, so if you want to check out that episode talking about what the future looks like with CRISPR, I'll link it in the description and you can go check it out. Another very, very big one that you might consider more engineering related is medical devices. There are thousands of medical devices that make the lives of doctors and other medical professionals much easier and help to save more lives. So this is things like MRI, x-ray, ultrasound, pacemakers, implants, surgical robots, and so much more. Recently, there's also been a lot of crossover between nanotechnology and biomedical engineering, so as we figure out how to make these devices smaller and smaller to the nanoscale, we might be able to more accurately pinpoint things like cancerous cells, and take them out using a very micro-sized surgical robot. So, as you can see, there's really so much opportunity in the biomedical field, and you can do pretty much anything that you want, as long as you like a little bit of biology. As of right now, it ends up being the case that people will end up in biomedical engineering without a formal biomedical engineering degree, because maybe they were interested in healthcare while they were taking their software or mechanical engineering degree, and then they ended up getting hired by a company who happened to work on biomedical devices. Generally speaking, people really like and appreciate biomedical engineers because their goals kind of align with the goals of a doctor, which is to heal and make people's lives easier, and to help design things that will save people's lives. So overall, people look really well upon biomedical engineers. The field is steadily growing, and you can be sure that after this pandemic, there will be a lot more funding going into these types 
of medical research and discoveries and things involving biomedical engineers. So this is a great field to be in right now. So now let's talk a little bit about the types of courses you would take in a biomedical engineering degree program so that you can figure out if it's something you might be interested in. According to this MIT OpenCourseWare website, you will learn a lot about topics that I've never heard of before, but it's basically just physics with a biological spin. So just to name a few, we have biological and physiological transport phenomenon, biological imaging and functional measurement, biomolecular engineering and cell and tissue engineering, computational biology and bioinformatics, genetic toxicology, macromolecular biochemistry and biophysics, etc. So if any of these titles sound interesting to you or any of the ones on this list, then maybe you should consider doing biomedical engineering. So once you're done taking all of the courses, what are some potential jobs or career paths that you can consider with a biomedical engineering degree? As I mentioned before, biomedical engineering is usually combined with one or two other types of engineering. So a good way to try to figure out what types of job you might get or what type of job you might be interested in is to take that other part of engineering that really interests you and then take that biological part that interests you and look for jobs that kind of fit into that category. For example, you might do prosthetic designs or you might work for a biomedical tech company that helps crunch data for hospitals. You might also design biotech devices. You might work on genomics. There are so many options. Another very cool thing is that you can do pretty much anything that you're interested in. And even if you decide not to do anything biology related, you will still have tons of amazing engineering experience that can take you into any field. So now that you know that you can pretty much work anywhere, what might your starting salary look like? Well, it really depends on what type of biomedical engineering you decide to do. Naturally, if you end up in tech and a little more software, robotics kind of situation, you'll probably be making upwards of $100,000. But if you do something a little more mechanical, biomedical devices, some other stuff like that, then you probably will make between $65,000, $75,000 and you can work your way up to well over $100,000 over a few years. Regardless of where you decide to start, you will end up with an amazing lifestyle and you'll be making a lot of money, so there's really nothing to complain about. I also know that there's gonna be a group of people out there who don't want to go into the workforce right away and would rather continue their education and take another degree instead. Traditionally, in engineering, you would probably go into a master's and then a PhD if you really enjoyed the field that you're studying, but with the biomedical engineering degree, you have another option, which is to go to med school. Now, just because you're in engineering doesn't mean that the qualifications for you to get into med school will change. You will still be competing with people who have a 4.0 GPA, so you have to be not only amazing as a student, but you have to take a more difficult and more complicated course load than most other degrees and get a really high GPA while doing it. And if this sounds a little difficult to you, an option that you have is to take a reduced course load and spread it out over five years. Nobody is going to complain if it takes you an extra year to do the degree. People only really care about the GPA at the end of the day. Additionally, if you don't want to continue in biomedical engineering, then you can take a more complementary degree, say something like robotics or something like materials engineering, if you're really interested in that, and you can go into a degree in master school, and most master schools will accept you regardless of the field of engineering you're in. I don't know how many times I have to say that, but it's really true that you can pretty much go into any field of engineering with any undergraduate engineering degree because pretty much everything that you will learn in an undergraduate engineering degree will be somewhat similar minus some more complex topics as you go up in the years. But even in a master's program, they will start you out with some of the basics so it doesn't really matter what your prior knowledge is. I really think that biomedical engineers are some of the coolest and most hardworking engineers out there because not only do they have to do all the stuff regular engineering does, but they also have to be good at biology, which if you ask most engineers, they will say they were not very good at biology in high school. So if you do choose to do this, I really respect that. Props to you. You're going to go places in life, and I really wish you the best of luck. So that about wraps up all the basics that you need to know about biomedical engineering. If you found this video useful, please share it with a friend. Maybe they can find it useful as well. And while you're at it, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more engineering videos like this one. And with that said, thank you so much for watching the video and have yourself a wonderful day.